Automation engineering has many forms, but their role is very different from product developers. Product or feature developers are probably what you're familiar with, someone who builds the website or writes the app. What's misleading about this is that there is way more to software development than just writing code. We obviously use programming as automation engineers, but we build very different programs. Instead of writing product features, we'll create tools to empower developers or automate tedious tasks. We'll design pipelines to automatically build, test, and deploy developer code. We also create test solutions to automate tests that provide quick feedback and raise confidence. We visualize data to show stakeholders proof of the health of our apps and services. We provide intelligence to help the team make informed, data-driven decisions confidently. And we monitor systems to identify when things go wrong and automate ways to resolve them. There could be more, but the point is that we're solving different problems than developers. In a nutshell, this role brings programming, automation, testing, and data skills together. Usually, each role will have a single most important thing. For a product developer, it could be build a robust product with a great experience. For an automation engineer, the single most important thing is to accelerate the achievement of shippable quality. Accelerate seems obvious because that's what the automation part is all about, but shippable quality is even more important. How would you know that your product is high quality? This is where software testing comes in. But what is software testing? Yes, we could look for bugs in the website or glitches in the video game, but testing can be broken down into a few things. We start things off with investigation. Like a detective, you ask questions and you seek out answers. The game devs told me that none of the vehicles should be able to make it into the cave. What else shouldn't make it into the cave? Because you better believe I'm going to try it. Evaluation. As you look for information, you try things out. Nope. The tank won't make it in the cave, but it looks like I can use this boulder on the ground as a ramp to get that jeep in. Ha! Take that, devs. Learning. You take notes on which vehicles can or cannot make it, but you also ask the devs why they don't want vehicles in the cave in the first place. And then finally, we have judging. You could point out that the jeep is able to make it into the cave, but what if that made the level more fun? After understanding why they didn't want any vehicles there in the first place, then you could provide your experience and recommendation. All right, devs, it makes sense not to want the tank in there because that would make it too easy of a level. But without the Jeep, it took me 30 seconds of walking into the cave to finally run into a monster. The Jeep really sped that up and made the encounter more fun. So, we either allow smaller vehicles in, or you could reduce that 30 second walk. Your experience and recommendation now sound professional, but it's also backed by the data you learned during investigation and evaluation. That would be much more convincing than, oh hey, you should let the Jeeps in because Jeeps are cool. The example I used was for testing a video game but those principles span all of software testing. However, how you do those things will depend on context. For example, testing a video game is very different than testing at Tesla or Netflix. Speaking of Netflix, let's use them as an example to drive these points home even more. I'll start with a question. What is the purpose of Netflix. This is what they say on their website. Unlimited movies and shows on a monthly subscription. Watch anywhere and cancel anytime. Sounds pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of developers that are writing lines and lines of code every single day. 
I'll ask some more questions, but I'd like you to write down your answers this time. Feel free to pause the video if needed. How do they, in this case Netflix, know their new code doesn't break anything? How do they know that customers aren't running into issues? How do they prevent someone from hacking your account? How do they make sure to charge you the right amount? How do they keep Netflix up and running all the time? These are exactly the kinds of questions that we answer and solve as automation engineers. You will have many questions like this, so make sure to jot them down and keep them in mind as you start building your own software. Take a look at this diagram that is a simplified representation of the Software Development Lifecycle, or SDLC. In most companies, product developers are introduced in Step 3, where they design the architecture of the code and then code it in Step 4. But that's it. The bolded words you see, local, staging, and production, are called environments. Environments are servers or machines where the applications can be accessed. So here, local almost always refers to the developer's computer. For example, as they are building their website, they could spin it up on their laptop to check out their code changes, but the downside is no one else could see it. Staging is an environment meant for all types of testing and demos. Developers can share the website with more people for testing or demo reasons before the customers see it. And lastly, production. Prod is the environment where the website is now in customers' hands. So if you were to open Netflix.com right now, you would be on their production environment. As automation engineers, we want high quality at all times and to accelerate anything meaningful which is why we can be involved in all of the steps. Going over the small list of things that we own, like creating tools, that's steps one through six. How about designing pipelines? That's steps four, five, and six. Creating test solutions, that's steps three through five. Visualize data, that's steps one through six. Provide intelligence, that's also one through six. And monitoring systems is five and six. I really enjoy what I do because I can work on improving things in any one of these steps. I get to see everything holistically instead of just being stuck in a couple of steps. This is another reason why companies invest so much in this role. All right, let's talk about acceleration and quality a bit. Both of these words mean different things to different people. So, I thought I'd give you some questions as a starting point so you can start to define it for yourself. At a simple level, here are some questions to help you think of acceleration. How long does it take to get from one step to the next? How long does it take to get something from step one and into the hands of customers in production, which is step six? What is slowing us down that I can remove or speed up? And here are some questions for quality. How long does something stay in each environment, like production, before needing a bug fix? How reliable is it? Is it up all the time like Netflix seems to be? Or do you get weird outages depending on the time of day or the number of people trying to use it? How do our customers use it? Do they like it? And lastly, does it actually solve the problems for our customers? Acceleration was easier to understand, but quality is more difficult to define and quantify. I'd like you to try and define what quality means to you. Do you think Netflix is high quality? Why or why not? 
To help with this exercise, think of some websites or apps that you really enjoy and give them a star rating of 1 through 5 and explain why you gave it that rating. Once you've done this, create a definition of what high quality is for you. And with that, we're done. You should now have a much better understanding of software testing and software development. Product developers and automation engineers are both programmers, but we focus on different things. Product developers focus on building features for the products and services. Automation engineers focus on quality and acceleration of those products and services. Companies don't want to just get things done. They want to do things right too. And that's where we come in. Next up, we'll write our first program in Python.